usually when people think about Atlantean civilization, think about technology, uh, but actually for us, we were taught since we were very child, very young, that we are the technology, that our bodies are the real technology. And everything that we do around is just to improve the signal of our technology. Mm. And we don't need anything from the outside. That's why when you go to the um, to the archaeologist, uh, you can find these huge stones and creations, but you can't find anything else. After the first time I did a podcast with Matthias De Stefano, who, believe it or not, remembers all of his past lives. And I understand if you're skeptical, I was too. But after the first podcast, I told him, I said, I want to do as many podcasts as possible with you. And so this is the fourth episode. And the theme of this episode is to talk about magic because he's experienced things that us in our reality now, in this time and place, would consider not possible. But he's been there, he's seen them, and he has stories to tell. And he's brought some of these things into our reality. Now, of course, if you weren't there and you didn't see him, maybe you don't believe him. And I respect that skepticism. To be fair, I'm a little skeptical still even right now. But nonetheless, if you hear him, you hear his songs, and you feel what he has to say, it all feels very true to me. So I'm excited to share this podcast with you on Magic with Matthias De Stefano. The truth is, is that we're all the master, we're all the healer, we're all the mystic. Give it up one time for Aubrey Marcus! Matthias, we're back. Nice to be back. Good to be back. So once again, I think the invitation for this podcast is to invite people into a field of belief, into a field of belief which may contrast with their own field of belief, mm -hmm. a field of belief that's supported by our society and the way that we think things work in our culture, that tries to explain the things in the stories that we have. But not all cultures have participated in these same stories. And there was cultures with different fields of belief where the field itself actually permitted different realities to exist. In some way, the belief of the field allowed the belief of the individual to be cellularly embodied mm -hmm. and allowed what we would call now magic to occur but in another field of belief it was just reality mm -hmm. just reality and you have the purview of someone who's been a part of these different fields of belief <clears throat> where you've seen different things happen and sometimes and we'll get into some of these times you've been able to call forth beings mm -hmm. channeled entities that operate from a different field of belief and can do things that are, quote, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. That I cannot. That they you can. can't do because <laughs> you're a part, you're still, even though you're born, you're Matthias. Yeah. You know, you're born here, your cells are from here, you, your parents, everything, you're part of this. But as something else moves through you, a new possibility emerges. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting here in a room with our sister Celeste, who was a witness to one of these unbelievable occurrences, which involved the rain mm -hmm. and the ability to call forth the rain. So let's start with that story. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a personal story that we have. Well, there were several thousand people who were there to witness it. Yeah. And some people, when they listen to this story, they're gonna be like, ah, coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay, because that's the immune system for that field of belief that's going to reject this new belief from attacking and penetrating that yes. belief system and causing a disruption because we like to keep a nice tight belief system. Mm -hmm. But for others, we might just open our minds and say, huh, let's see what happens if we take this in and let it work around a little bit, like a little, like, like the viruses do, just a virus of a new belief that comes in and starts changing the RNA and changing the DNA sequences of our own field of belief. 
So let's see if we can allow this story and many other stories that we'll tell here to start to permeate our own field of belief. Sure. I would like to start by maybe clarifying some words so sure. people could understand better some of the things that we would go through in the hist in the stories um, that today we call magic, those things that we cannot understand, that we can mistake it like tricks of magic. So, whoa, you are full in the mind. So the mind believes something that is not. Uh, but actually the origin of the word magic comes from the Persian language, I guess, uh, in the in Iran, that was magush. And the word the word magush means uh, the the chemical, means chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Arabic, the one that makes chemistry, it's alchemist. So al is um, is to determine the one al chemistry al chemir. So when you have the uh, the concept of alchemist is what in that language they call magush. Mm -hmm. So that's the magician. The magician is the one that does chemistry with a reality. But the belief of chemistry today is related to the science, which is the logis, the logics, the analytic of reality. So it must understand everything, how it works and so on, but analyze the things separate from the being. Right. What the alchemist analyzes the things becoming those things. So in order to understand water, the alchemist becomes the water. In order to understand the fire, the alchemist becomes the fire. Doesn't analyze it as something outside. So the belief Which is really the only way that you can know anything. Yeah. Right? Like if you wanna if you wanna say like, do you believe in God, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. Like well, then you're putting yourself as separate than God mm -hmm. and then projecting like already there's a separation from you and God. So if you say, I believe in God, you're actually wrong yeah. in a certain way because you either know you either know it, you know it, or yeah. if you're believing it as if it's something else, then you don't actually know it. Uh -huh. And this is what like a, a Bufo ceremony, a 5-MeO-DMT ceremony does, is it collapses the separation between you and what you could call god now mm -hmm. of course there was other words for it love energy whatever that might yeah. be but it collapses the separation so now you're like oh well i've become this mm -hmm. it's not that like i witnessed it it's not like a guy in a beard talked to me about some shit yeah it's like no i became it so i know yeah and that's like that's the way to know anything mm -hmm. so uh the 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 thing of why we separate things is because when the alchemist was doing something there were people watching and that act of staring at what you were looking at makes you think that you were seeing it and not being part of it mm. and that's what in latin we call uh uh to see or to watch something very um, uh, straight like focus when, focus in something and the word for in Latin for staring at something very focused is miracle so miracle actually is the act of staring at something that is chemical that is happening but you don't understand <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, so the the magush used to do this kind of miracles that people didn't understand but they were staring at it and that's what created the idea of separation like if there was something else outside happening because i don't get it so it's not part of myself right and um until you you don't become the experience itself you don't understand it that's why it's so difficult even if i tell the stories it's difficult to to be part of the story because you think that you have to believe the story. And believe is the main concept that is wrong. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you have to believe me, it's, it's not truth. 
<laughs> you know, because that's that's what a miracle is about. Uh, a miracle is you witnessed what happened, and that's what makes you part of it. Right. But when you just listen about it, it becomes faith, and faith is very difficult to be trust because you don't have anything to compare to. It's just faith. You just believe whatever you've been told. Uh, so that what I'm trying to say is um, that it's very difficult to transmit um, what some people were living with a miracle happening by magic, which is turning the chemistry into something different. Mm -hmm. um than just listen at it so it's it's very diffi yeah. different yeah what i what i you know the difference between trust and faith is really you you trust what you know yeah like you trust what you know so if you trust like in a partnership you know in mm -hmm. my partnership with vilana for example like we often say i see you i trust you i love you mm -hmm. and i have faith in you we say all of those things which are very important and they go in that order very specifically. So the seeing, which is to see, not just look at, look at is different than seeing. We yeah. can all look at things and that's from our own limited perspective. But mm -hmm. to see actually means to take the inside, go mm -hmm. into the interiority yeah. of a person and see through them. Mm -hmm. And then you can see them. And when you can see them, see through them as them, then you can trust them. Mm -hmm. And when you can really trust them, then you can really yeah. love them. Mm -hmm. But there will always be that which you cannot see, that which you cannot know, therefore, yeah. which is the gap at which it is nice to offer faith, mm -hmm. you know, like the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. You know, so if you're gone yeah. and I don't see what you're doing, I'm not imagining that you're in another room having sex with somebody. Yeah. Like I have faith, mm -hmm. you know, that even when I don't see you, yeah. like I know, like I believe that this is good. And that's, to me how how it goes so it is difficult because we're going to be telling stories that we haven't been a part of yeah and so we're asking people it will sound crazy <laughs> yeah we're asking people <laughs> to take a leap yep. of faith mm -hmm. and so feel free everybody listening yeah to take the leap or don't take the leap yeah. it's okay but we're it's just an invitation it's an invitation to try it on mm -hmm. and just allow it to to work through you in a certain way uh, because really the only way to know anything is to be there for a part of it. So the only way, even though I've heard this story about the rain, yeah. like when Celeste tells the story about the rain or the story about how you sung the song of Gaia inside the pyramid, you know, mm. in the middle of the night, and she starts crying about it, I get a, I get a feeling of what she knows. Mm -hmm. And it makes me believe her. I have faith in her. I believe what she's saying, but I don't know it Yeah, because I haven't seen it. Yeah. You know, so it's a it's a different thing, but it's still, I think, powerful. Just allow your own intuition and your own sense to just say, mm -hmm. "All right, let me let me feel this. Let me feel this and see how it feels." Yeah. Well, I've been personally, I've been called uh, um, the rain child since I was twelve years old in at school, um, because everyone kind of. Um, knew that whatever happened to me was related to the weather. And um, even the teachers were calling me uh, the rain child uh, and some other from the classroom uh, because it was, uh, when I was a child, I, with these guides that I had, they reminded me how it was to be part of nature how the reality is not something a part of me and I am not living in this world. I am this world. So they used to repeat me uh, every time this, like you are the water, you are the people, you are the house, you are this and that. So I started to become that and be able to communicate with it from within, not like talking to the objects or to the nature, but to understand that uh, I was listening to myself in different shapes. Mm. So that was like like kind of a game for me when I was a child uh, in the garden and playing with the plants, with the animals, with the rocks. 
uh, but I actually could feel how I was communicating with everything. So I noticed how when I got furious or with hunger, um, the weather changed according to what I was feeling or when I, when I was happy, it was also changing according to, to me. And, um, and it was really weird to explain because I, I had no way to explain it at that time. But <coughs> um, eventually my environment, my, my, the people around me started to, 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 to look at it like something is happening. Uh, but we don't know how to how to understand it, mm -hmm. and it was because besides my family was agnostic, and the context that I had was science and nothing else, like no many beliefs in anything. Most, yeah, nothing. Um, the guides that I was able to listen and to talk to, they were uh, making me part of a culture that I had no around. Right. <clears throat> so since very child, my cells listened, you are the elements, mm -hmm. you are the nature, and you can play with it, you can know it. When I was, um, when I was waiting for the bus to go to the school, I was just moving myself and see how the trees were moving with the wind. And I was feeling the trees, and I was being the trees, and I was being the wind. And so I could make it l stronger or soft according to how I was moving. And I think let's just pause here for a second because the, the interesting thing to note is the reason that you were able to do this was because your guides from the earliest age were infusing your actual cellular memory, mm -hmm. like your understanding with this reality. Yeah. So you are a part of a field of reality in which you are inseparable from the natural elements. Yeah, many so things that allows, came. Yeah, many but, things came together because in my home, I had no one saying there is God, and this is the world. So my cells never heard the concept of someone that was superior to me. I was born without a dad. So I didn't have the image of someone to follow either. So I didn't have the image of, I have to be like him. Mm -hmm. uh, and my family was with many f uh, women, a lot of women around. So they were not saying you have to be like this or like that. They were just allowing me to play. Mm -hmm. and And all those cultural facts that even if I was in a society that was uh, Christian, uh, in my home, it wasn't that. And in my school, I didn't have that because my school was for farmers. Mm -hmm. So nobody was praying. Nobody went to the church. We were all dealing with literal bullshit. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, working in the farms. Mm -hmm. So, um, so... I was able to to become that because the guides um, knew that I had no links or anybody that that would tell me what you are saying is not truth because there is only one God and blah, blah blah or you have to follow what your dad says or blah, blah blah. So I had a context that allowed me to listen to them and to become them. So it's very important this because since you are born, you are being told so many things in what to believe, what is wrong, what is good, what you should do, what the society expects from you. So you've been told so many things that your cells say, okay, I have to do that, otherwise they will kill me or I will die. I will be uh, thrown apart. Outcast, yeah. <laughs> yes, so um, when people doesn't have that and the context allows you to become the tree if you want to be the tree. Suddenly you are the tree. And uh, this is what happens with so many cultures in the Amazon, for example, or, um, or the um, native Australians. Uh, they can listen to the reality. They can communicate with the wind. 
they can talk to the trees so the trees can tell them what is the medicine what is the truth what is um, how to communicate with others through the wind uh, through the trees uh, because those people doesn't have the idea of there is a god outside right and i think it's it's also again it's important to recognize that we can't just change our mind and -hmm. then expect that's not the place where all of our memories are stored Mm-mm. like our memories are stored in through the entirety of our being yeah. this is like this is the record keeper yeah. right here this is like the physical record of everything that that we have been entrained to believe and so it's a process to yeah. to actually move to a different state of understanding and i've seen this you know in my own in my own experience what i've experienced so i can talk about maestro alberto mm-hmm. who was a ayahuasca shaman and i watched him on several every night that we drank ayahuasca he had a particular ikaro where he was singing to the bats Mm -hmm. and i'm imagining as he sung the song of the bats he was in frequency with the bats he was the bats Mm -hmm. and the bats would come and the bats would circle the maloka Mm -hmm. in the spiral for as long as he was doing the ikaro and then he would finish the ikaro of the bats and the bats would leave (laughs) yeah you know and i sent and i've seen and i was there when our sister Blue, and under the medicine of ayahuasca, and I've told this story on that other podcast, was able to actually enter into the space of the wind. So there was like there was like portal for her to enter in and then whip up a wind that ended up knocking down a tree. Yeah. And it was these moments are like, wow, what the <laughs> fuck? Yes. Because it 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 attack it attacks my belief system, which mm-hmm. is like this is nonsense. Yeah. This is like I love, I love to imagine that this is real. Like I love reading Patrick Rothfuss The Name of the Wind and imagining the what they call sympathy which is magic which is ultimately if you have the name of the wind you can control the wind it's a beautiful yeah. story i love imagining that that's real but then i encounter some things in which i've seen it and f- not seen it just with my eyes which could be trickery but seen it with the entirety of my being known yeah. that this is what is happening mm-hmm. and so that opens me up to another belief but my cells still don't believe it enough that i could go out there on the balcony and be like thunderstorm you know <laughs> yeah. like i can't do that shit <laughs> no you know but even though but i'm I'm like open enough and like permeable enough to it yeah but you know so to go back circling all the way back for you you had a different way in which your cells were informed from the yeah. start uh, and it's that that usually when when the mind is in control uh, of reality for us we tend to believe that we are controlling the nature that let be a storm and the storm is there because we think that it's the mind that controls it but the thing is that you have to convince each one of your cells that you are the storm it's mm. not like yeah yeah like a mutant stuff is is or a movie or mm. superhero stuff is is uh is not that you are controlling it is that you are becoming it and in order to become that you have to release the idea of who you are and that's the most difficult thing because your ego tries to survive all the time right uh it tries to be yourself in order to be as much as as it can in this reality so in order to be able to become something else you have to allow yourself to become something else and stop being what you are which is a death so like the part of you that you're Mm -hmm. identified with you mu- it, you must be willing to allow it to die. Yeah. Like this is no small thing. No. You know, it's like you surrender it on the altar to mm-hmm. die. Of course it will be reborn. It's not yeah. dead forever. You can't, you know, that's not the point. We're supposed to have an ego. It has a very important purpose. Yeah. However, for temporarily, this is the myth of the phoenix. It mm-hmm. has you have to allow it to go to ash. Yeah. In the place of ash mm-hmm. when the ego is not there, then the the magic of something else yeah can emerge can happen so uh that was that allowed me to channel for example uh that was what allowed me to to uh manage somehow the elements in some of the of the gatherings and some of the activations that we did uh, sometimes there were only two people sometimes there were thousands but uh, we all could witness that as much more people 
is together is stronger because also one of the things is that um you can you can use the energy of a lot of people to become even a bigger uh thing a, so it's a bigger, like a magnifier yes so that's why when there is a huge amount of people uh the magic is really much more powerful is that why in the in the bible they say where three or more are gathered yeah like that's where there's like it's the law of three the trinity yeah. it's needed in order to manifest mm -hmm. uh deeper things yeah. yeah and greater things and so that's why you need at least three persons in order to manifest something mm -hmm. um but anyway there there are plenty of stories the, the first time that i really that i really was scared about what i was able to do what i was becoming uh, was one day at school, I was 13 years old or 14, I, I don't know, maybe, uh, almost 14, and I was in the classroom, and of course I w I've been the most weird person in the room. <laughs> so um, I was bullied because I have a lot of material to be bullied, <laughs> um, but also to be loved. So I had a lot of friends that loved weird, a lot of a lot I had a lot of teachers that loved weird stuff and a lot of the other ones that sure. didn't. But it was natural. Now now I I I know that I would have to have more fun with it, but at that time I, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah. So um there was one of them that was constantly like like uh how do you say um uh, bothering me uh from the back of the class. And I was going through a very dark process in which I was blaming myself for remembering all these things. Like uh, I was remembering so many things that I was blaming myself for a lot of people that are being born, uh, for a lot of things that are like this in the world because we didn't do it properly in the past or this kind of thing. So I was And this really... is because of your memories of your past lives and Yes, and that started like that. at 12. Yeah. So uh, I was really concerned about all these things. And uh, and I remember I, I was in English class uh, in Argentina and they were uh, mocking me and all these kind of things. And suddenly I felt all this energy that I was working with in another in another level, trying to understand, and and the environment became like heavy and weird, and and suddenly he threw me something in the head, and I turn and hit the the how do you say the, the table? Desk. Yeah, yeah. I I hit it and and said stop. And when I said that, a lightning went through the window and break the glass and uh, and the rain started to come inside the but it was not storm <laughs> it just appeared and uh, and the trunk of a of a tree fell down against the window uh, and and hit someone that was inside the room and um and i sat down breathing like <sighs> like more relaxed because of the discharge of energy uh -huh. uh, and everyone was afraid of me since that time <laughs> <laughs> and, and and from that moment was like the storm kid you know like um, right something like that uh and uh, it happened many times at school with uh tornadoes and this kind of things like when i was really really mad <laughs> something this podcast, like every other one, whether I mention it or not, is brought to you by Onnit Alpha Brain Black Label. Now, it's brought to you by Onnit Alpha Brain Black Label, one, because this was the company that I helped create, and a formula which I worked with some of the top experts in the world to build, which has become the flagship nootropic all across the country and many parts of the world. But it's also brought to you by it because I take it every single time I do a podcast. I don't miss a podcast without taking Black Label. Now, it used to be Alpha Brain back in the day, but since Black Label came on the market, it just provides this crystalline focus where I'm able to drop in, really connect with the guests, have access to information, stories, words. It creates this kind of flow state. 
And whether I'm writing or podcasting or reading, taking notes, whatever I'm doing, Alpha Brain Black Label is my ride or die homie. So click the link on the screen if you're interested in checking it out or go to onit.com slash Aubrey for 10% off Alpha Brain Black Label and all other Onnit supplements and products. So for people listening now, so many of you are going to be like, this dude thinks he's an X-Man. Yeah. You know, and like, so this like we is all like, can do it. yeah, this dude thinks he can do this. This is some nonsense. Like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm done with this, you know, yes. but just potentially entertain the idea that this is the immune system for your own, for your own belief system. Mm -hmm. doing what it's supposed to do which is to help you survive and help that entity that is your belief system your identity structure and say like all right well let's just let's just go a little further here and let's not worry about my immune system of belief let's say like yeah it's strong enough it'll hold up if it's supposed to hold up here and let's just like all right like maybe this is possible yeah well i sometimes i don't i don't understand well you know that um, usually these kind of things happen. I, I had the opportunity to speak with some of my colleagues in the in the, uni the university uh, that they were very Christian, Catholic, and asking them, you are Catholic, you believe in this and that. Yes. Do you believe in angels? Yes, of course. Well, I used to talk to angels. And they said, I don't believe you. And I said, why? If you believe in angels, why you wouldn't believe that... I was talking to them and they had no answer for that. And I don't know, I was wondering why a person that says that believe in something doesn't believe in it when someone else says, I, I knew it, I mm -hmm. felt it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because a lot of people have, have been treated like mad, um, crazy. Uh, because most of religions doesn't, they don't want for their value system to be judged by new things. So it's better to keep that the people that were able to talk to angels have died a long time ago. So the books that we have now are the right ones. So if anyone speaks with an angel now and the angel says no those things were mistaken so the whole thing collapses so they managed the system managed to make everyone believe in that but that nobody else is able to do it so you have a stagnant dead logos a word that is stagnant and then you can build a power structure on top of the foundation of a stagnant word yeah rather than the revivification the constant revivification mm -hmm. of a newer connection pre like relevant to that time in that way and this is a in my that's own why they kill a lot of people because they said but i can talk to god oh, boom yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah Shh. <laughs> yeah because because the whole power structure is built on old yes. words but if you go back deep enough into the lineage back mm -hmm. into the lineage of the semitic like of the of the traditions all the way to the kabbalist roots you will actually see in the torah in the, in the some of the ancient texts that they actually talk about this how mm -hmm. at any point like they had a whole codification of an understanding but if at any point someone as their unique self was in contact with with their their own divinity you know again not projecting the divine yeah, outside own, yeah in contact with their own divinity they could become what's called antinomian they could move against the laws the customs the mores of mm -hmm. the religion because they were in current yeah. fresh contact mm -hmm. so it creates a living word like a living pond like a living river a river yes. that's not the same river and it's not the same person who goes in so it's always changing as words themselves change the words like th literally the meaning of words changes all the fucking time yeah love god it changes all the time depending on our culture so sometimes you even need new words and new mm -hmm. ways to explain things and new ideas that must be able to revivify yeah and that's what we get from the stagnation of trying to fix something life itself always evolving but instead we fix it and now we get where we are where yeah. we have old structures that are crumbling we do that because uh we are afraid of change and losing control of what we have uh 
evolution is about losing control of what we, we believe we have. And uh, as mammals that tries to survive all the time, we get stuck with our conception of reality because otherwise we believe that we will disappear. And some people believe that their power will disappear uh, if you evolve, if you transform yourself into something else. Well, their pseudo power will disappear, right? Yeah, so what? like, so I would call it pseudo power. So real power, mm -hmm. the real power is yeah. who we really are. Yeah. Like who we really are as a divine unique self, you yeah. know, the Matthias, mm -hmm. the Aubrey, as in all of our, in all of our, all of our interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. But the pseudo power is the power of money, of title, of, of the ability to, to control people in certain ways. It's this artificial, it's like pseudo being yeah. like artificial. Uh -huh. So like the artificial power will dissolve. Yeah. But in the dissolution of the artificial power, you have actually finally the opportunity to mm -hmm. access real power. Yeah. So it's like giving up all of the, you know, bullshit artificial sweetener to like yeah. be like, oh, here's some real sugar. Like here's, this is the real sweetness. This is the yeah. real fruit. I'm I'm eating a fucking pear <laughs> yeah. right now rather than this this pseudo like drug version yeah. of what it really is. And well when you when you don't have the the cultural beliefs and the structure of what your parents or your your teachers or society told you to believe um you can't become all that. You can be your really yourself and instead of saying I believe in this you say i am this or instead right. of saying uh i believe there is a god uh, you say i am god and those are powerful words that were forbidden from our language because it makes you a lot of people say oh that's egocentric or that's um that's um uh, words that you that shouldn't be said because uh, it's forbidden or something like this so um we have been forbidden for a long time, centuries, to say sacred words that makes you become magic. Mm. That So your entire uh, cell system is saying, don't say that or we can be killed because that is not good for you to say, I'm God, I am the water, I am the air, mm -hmm. um, because that's, that's witchcraft and people were killed because of it. So, um, be, so that's why it's easier to kind of do these kind of things with people or for people that doesn't have that weight of belief. Um, this belief system that, that tells you what to do, what to believe, what not. Yeah. And also there's been some people who've said, I am God and I'm the only God, or I am God and I'm the only one. Yeah. Whenever you say, and I'm the only one, like that's, I think that's good for like the Tigger song, but it's not good for all of reality because the truth is like, yeah, I'm God and so are you. It yep. always has to be followed with, and so are you and so is everybody yeah. else. And yeah. as long as you can get that, <laughs> then mm -hmm. actually you get it. Yeah. But the moment you go, I am and you aren't, well, you that's fucked up. That's a problem. That's a fucking problem. And <laughs> we've seen problem. that problem. And, so and that's you don't another have thing power. that we're afraid of. You, yeah. can, you only have power under, upon the, the, con the unconsciousness, but you don't have power Pseudo in the power. reality. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, when, when, you, when you become that, um, it's, it's incredible because you can, you can feel what, what the environment is feeling. You can feel what others are feeling, what the plants are feeling, everything. And, and um, that allows you to become the everything. And sometimes if that everything is resounding with you, with what you are doing, uh, so they manifest. So it's not that um, because of my will, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, someone can come and say, okay, show me that you can make rain. And I will go and try to make rain. And that's ego. I'm not, because I'm trying to prove something. And who is trying to prove someone? Something to someone. And you're trying to prove it 
in opposition to a field of belief yeah. that is trying to disprove you. Yeah. You know, which is also one of the things that's actually happening that's in all of these experiments that, that are being done. You're asking someone to prove something mm -hmm. against a field of belief which whose immune system is trying to repel that. Yeah. And that's what I think people can sometimes misunderstand. Well, if this could happen, it would be on, we'd, like, we'd all know about it. Well, you're asking something that's magical to happen in isolation of a field of belief which mm -hmm. is which is saying which occasionally can happen as a miracle yeah and where it looks like a miracle but it's way more difficult yeah to do it that way and way more rare for it to do it that way because you have to fight against the opposition of a, of a strong field of belief which is telling reality in all the cells that this isn't possible yeah well in in the gathering that we had in 2018 in argentina i had three main gatherings that my guides used to tell me that the rain would be the key because the rain will bring the information for uh, everything that we needed to do. So like 10 months before the gathering, I told everyone, bring some umbrellas because it's going to rain and uh, or be prepared because it will rain. And it's like, how, how could you possibly know that that day at that time it will rain and say, well, that's for sure because we need the information. So uh, this time was for for everyone, uh, okay, bring coats and stuff because it's going to rain. And the gathering was in Egypt. And, <laughs> and this is the one like, I was talking about earlier with Celeste. Yes. With in Celeste. Egypt, which yeah. is much, it's much more rare for it to rain in Egypt than it is in Argentina. Yeah, of course. And it's like uh, how it's going to rain in Egypt that much as we usually need uh, because it only rains like 2%. Of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's nothing. It's just a pouring a little bit of water. And um, uh, so I, I, I said, and a lot of people brought coats and stuff. Except for case. Celeste. She was, Except she was, for Celeste. She was yeah, like, she, I didn't, she she didn't get no the idea. memo. No. <laughs> <laughs> she, she signed up late. She yeah. didn't get the email. <laughs> well, there were a lot coats. of people that signed up late and had no idea why they were there. Like, oh, yeah, pyramids. And... Um, <laughs> So the first day uh, in the morning, uh, when everyone got inside, suddenly the storm comes and it rains so much. Like it rains for the whole year in that morning. And the storm was so strong that it even took the, the main gate and throw it away to the ground. And all, everything was like moving like in a tornado kind of thing. And 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 it was cold suddenly it was freezing like it's egypt even if it was winter uh it was like normal uh, temperature for the sun with heat but suddenly it got freezing and starts to rain a lot like it really um it was not just a normal rain it was like too much <laughs> and uh and um and the whole gathering was, of course, without any roof because it's Egypt. Nobody thinks that it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so nothing is prepared for the rain. Except for the people who all bought raincoats if they got the memo. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it was funny to see a lot of people wearing raincoats, like saying, yeah, we knew it. <laughs> yeah. It's a Matthias gathering, so <laughs> it, it will rain for sure. <laughs> so so they all know that. Um, and um, And I was so happy that I was supposed to go later but I, I had to run in, in the rain and I saw all the people like going inside and trying to find a place to cover. So I just appear running and say, no, come to the rain, like, like dance in the rain. We need this information. Mm -hmm. So suddenly all the people were under the rain and dancing and with drums and everything, uh, bringing all that. Um, and, and we started all the the gathering with this water, with this rain. And suddenly when when we needed to start with our um, uh, task, our conversations, um, the, the clouds just opened and the sun was amazing. And the heat came back. I heard there was a rainbow over the pyramids. Uh, yeah, there were rainbows, <laughs> yeah. So a bit far, but you could see it <laughs> yeah so um the whole day was blessed with 
the four elements uh, because it was the dust of the desert coming, the water, uh, the the sun, uh, the wind, everything. So uh, we were blessed by the elements, and our task was about the elements. And uh, we, I went in November uh, last year just to talk to the elements. I, I went with some with a few friends, four of them. Uh, just to talk to the elements, to explain them what we were going to do, to ask for permission, to become them. Um, so it was really powerful uh, because it was, we asked permission to the government of Egypt, we asked permission to the police, but we also went there to ask permission for the, to the elements, to the, to the earth, mm -hmm. to do the gathering. So, uh, so when I've ex now I've experienced this obviously in the medicine journeys, like the animistic philosophy mm -hmm. and theology, which is what really prevalent with the ayahuascaros and the Wachumero Don Howard, who I studied with, it's this understanding because of our because of our ability to connect through the bridge, the chakaruna, the bridge mm -hmm. of these medicines, we're able to connect, yeah. and while it seems to me that they don't have a personality like we have. Mm -hmm. We can only understand in terms of personality and language. So we may be having a conversation. Cause I remember I had a, I had a conversation with fire one time on a, on a Wachuma journey. Mm -hmm. And I, <clears throat> I like lit a mapacho, which is like a, a yeah. tobacco cigar. And I lit it and it just, it just burst up into, burst up into flame. Mm -hmm. and like burn my finger it was like really weird it's went Phew. and usually it lights like pretty normal mm -hmm. and like i got this communication from the fire like it said you haven't said thank you yeah <laughs> you haven't said thank you like you've been burning these mapachos all day and yeah. you haven't once acknowledged me yeah and i was like whoa you didn't recognize me <laughs> yeah i was like whoa yeah well like whoa you know and so it was this reminder and then i started in this communication like speaking to the fire mm -hmm. and then the fire told me so then Right after that, I got this lit, and then the ember fell out of the ember fell out of my mapacho and fell like right on the on the uh, arm of the chair. And the fire was like, "If you pick me up and you trust me, I won't burn you. Mm -hmm. I won't burn you." I was like, "Oh man, you know, <laughs> like that sounds like dense." So I like I didn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I went and I grabbed it like really gingerly, like a little. Yeah. <laughs> and I went and it burned me. Yeah. And then it was like, it was like, trust me. Mm -hmm. And I like got in with the help, obviously of Wachuma, with the help. Yeah. I was like, okay, I trust you. And I like picked it up and like held it in my hand and then just dropped it in the bucket. And it was that was like my one one little taste. Yeah. <laughs> that I got of this type of magic. Yeah. But not only the communication, which is mind blowing, yeah. and of course anybody listening could be like, "I just made that up." He's just thinking about yeah. things and whatever. But it's like a little taste, a little yeah, you taste. Have to experience that. And then, but but I know something different. Hmm. I know what I felt. I know the communication. I I know it. I know the difference, and I know the difference of when I gingerly, fearfully touched it, and when I went in with full belief. Yeah. Of what of what could happen, and of course we've all heard the stories of the fire walks and these different things that have happened but it's it's these things start to gradually like expand what our mind can hold yeah yes and uh, and um uh, yeah well th th when we were there in november 11th uh, november 11th in 2021 to ask for permission to the elements uh, i always go first to say thank you for everything um, to explain to them, to the elements, to the guardians of the land, um, what are we going to do that is not about to take them stuff, uh, take stuff from them, but to give them uh, recognition. And so it is like a meeting with the elements to try to explain them about uh, what we are doing and to make them part of it, not like just, oh, we are humans, we come here, we... Do whatever we want. It takes what it wants. Yeah. Honey badger mentality. And um, so we went there and they were really mad, really, really, really mad on us. Like um, they they took me and I was like gone for one day and a half. And uh, 
I really was wasn't there. I was like underground, and I felt the anguish of the water in the territory. And and she was crying, crying like uh, I was like channeling it, and I was crying and lost. And and suddenly she was, I say she, but whatever. Um, uh, she was really um, stressed, like afraid of us coming to take the water away uh, like everyone else did. And I said, why? And said, because all this was on me. All this was water and it was trapped. And I said, how is trapped? And they said, the press, the, the, the dam in mm. Aswan. Mm. The water is not flowing here. It's, it, it's not the clean water. Well, how are you going to get a golf course, Matthias? A what? How are you going to get a golf course? If you don't what dam you the water, <laughs> you, you need golf courses. Yeah, in in Cairo, yeah, in, it's well, necessary. We did the gathering in a golf course. Yeah, I know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, if you don't dam the water, you can't have a golf course. So water, <laughs> suck it up. Yeah, it's for golf. It. <laughs> it's, it's for golf. It's important. It's only one one Glad place. We got for that golf straight. There. All right. <laughs> so yeah, we we had to do it in a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> so so she was really really mad and. And I was feeling how she was trying to release that tension. And and that night, there was a storm in Aswan that um that took like water from the from the from the dam and started to create like a twist in around the city that, that same night that, that was happening. And um and and took um scorpions from the desert and they were flying around and and hitting the people like it, they call it a scorpion rain that happened that day and it was like it's like a sharknado yes <laughs> it, it was crazy people were trying to hide from the from the from the scorpions that were on the streets because of the of the weird rain that came that yeah. day uh, november 11th last year and um and i felt the the madness of the elements trying to to speak to say right. here we need to release this tension here and uh, uh so we agree to to bring love to uh, and and we invite them we invited them to be part of the gathering so when the gathering started the four of them came and and we all felt it like mm -hmm. whoa <laughs> like it was so powerful. So, and that's why I said to everyone, go and hug them and feel them because you should not be afraid of them. They are here to, to mm -hmm. be a part of the gathering to bring us the data that we don't have, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and we have to become them because we had the water group, the air group, and we we should not be just people. We should become the elements that we were working with. So they came the first day, like entering the same gate that people were entering, and and it was magical. It was something that they they all experienced like magic because there were rainbows and rain in in, in Giza. Mm. <laughs> it's like that that's not normal. Of course, that th there are rainy days in Egypt, uh, but exactly in that moment, in the opening of that gathering. Um, where we were calling the elements, uh, that makes you uh, be connected with it. Like yeah, yeah. And of course, um, I was trying to say before in 2018 we did the second of these three main gatherings in Argentina, and also I was expecting for rain. Um, but again, bringing back the story of my dad, my dad came to the gathering because we asked them. We asked him to help us with some stuff. So he went there, not believing in anything, anything. And and when the storm came and he saw how many of us were pulling the clouds, like coming back or coming to us or calling for the portal to be open. And the gathering was 11-11 and, and 11 birds came and made the turn around everyone to open each one of the meditations, he started to to ask me, D did you did you release these birds 
before every meditation and it was like no they are coming from the mountains i was like why <laughs> so because it's the portal so they are saying now it's the moment to do it they are showing us the portal so because they were 11 so they came 11 then in the second meditation 11 again in the last meditation 11 again doing circles around all the people and then they left so we could start and 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 then the the weather and the storm and everything that happened it was like uh <laughs> he he was like i don't believe in any of this but that was really weird mm. and he said we went to the hotel and and um, and we said um uh, and they said uh, the 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 gal in the hotel said have you bought the coats already and he said coats if it's a sunny day my dad was saying if it's a sunny day and there there's no rain in the in the um, how to say in the schedule of, mm -hmm. i don't know how to say it. forecast forecast yeah um there's no rain in the forecast. Uh, no, but Matthias is here. It was like everyone in the, in the town knew. Mm -hmm. So they were saying, but Matthias is here. For sure, will rain. I was like, so that night when it rained, they, they were to the hotel and the route and the, the road was like all a river. Like flooded. <laughs> yeah. Flooded. And they couldn't reach the hotel and and they went all wet, like all the <laughs> pouring water. Uh, inside the hotel and, and and she said i told you <laughs> I, told, <laughs> I told you it would happen so um he he ended up telling me and telling all his friends that didn't believe in this everything that happened because he witnessed that something even if he couldn't understand it something was happening and he was witness of that yeah um he didn't say it was a miracle or something like this but he couldn't experience he could experience how all these people um, were there like, like saying, oh, this is a miracle. W everyone was like, this is normal. This is how it is supposed to be. So it's not that, whoa, look what happened. No, everyone was connected to the storm. Yeah. Everyone was acknowledging that we needed that. Everyone was acknowledge uh, acknowledging that the birds were the opening. So it was not that, oh, Matthias did it. It was that it was our reality. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's really powerful because usually um, we tend to believe that, oh, is that person that has like the magic or is that person that is special? But it's not. It's just that uh, that person maybe is living a reality that you can also live in. And when you are, when you are there and it's your own reality too, so yeah. it's not that that person is special, it's that was just connecting with something that you were not there yet. And it is possible that, and, and likely, that there were people that were actually outliers, special, like had more access. Because you told a story of when you were in, I think it was Scotland? Yeah. And you went to a sacred site in Scotland mm -hmm. and you channeled Druid's temple. a Druid's temple. Why don't you tell that story to contrast? That was again. even weird for me. That was that was weird for you and because because that because <laughs> that one that one wasn't even that one wasn't you. So you because of your guidance and because of your background, you yes. have some ability to form that sympathetic resonance with the elements. Mm -hmm. But in that case, there was something even 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 stronger in, in a way. Yes, because I usually connect with the water. Uh, that's my element. Let's say it's like if each one of us is connected much more with one element than others uh, by resonance. So my entire soul is connected to the history of water. Um, but this time it wasn't me. Uh, we we were we were doing um, a path through the British Islands, and we started in in the south of England in Cornwalls, and we ended in. Um, in the north of Scotland, in Orkney Islands. Uh, so we went through the chakras of, of uh, the island um, in every stone circle with 50 people. And um, very weird things happened. Uh, and I would like to say the, the first one uh, that happened the third day. Um, 
it was 14 days changing uh, every day from different place. So it was crazy. <laughs> uh, and the third day we were in Stonehenge. And uh, our trip has this symbol, which was like a triskel. I don't know if you, well, the term in English, I don't know if it's triskel too. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, three symbols that are the same and connected. Okay. Okay. So, so this, um, uh, this was the symbol, like a spiral, spiral, a spiral, mm -hmm. connected like three. Um, and that was a symbol that we took for, for the trip. And, and, um, and we were connecting with it in uh, Stonehenge. And, uh, and when we finished that connection, doing like opening a portal there, uh, when we finished that connection, uh, someone sends us a message saying a crop circle appeared just aside where you are. So we took the bus and went there five minutes on the road, five minutes there. And we went to the crop cycle that appeared just five minutes or half an hour before or after we were doing the connection. Uh, and the crop circle was our logo. Like... It appeared exactly what what we were working with, mm -hmm. and and we called the the owner of the fields to say to can, can we go inside to see the the, the crop circle? And they said, uh, "Do we have one? Like uh, like we had one last last week?" And I said, "No, no, something appeared today, uh, half an hour ago." And they said, "Oh, we had no idea. Yes, you can come." So we went inside the the fields and and it was there and we were able to sit and meditate there and the people were saying like what are the possibilities of this happening like mm. like we manifested this we uh and it was like a communication with the underground and the beings that usually send data and information and we were working with them so we were becoming them shaping the same structure so they share the same information with us so it was amazing to see that appear yeah, it's a in the cross. Yeah, it was a communication. Yes, uh, just half an hour after <laughs> we were who doing is the it, Who is it that discovered that the crop circle existed? Oh, because there are some people that, that are constantly checking the forecast of crop cycle uh -huh. that they are start to appear Like through like early Google June. Maps and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of people checking all the time if they appear or not with drones and mm -hmm. so on. So... Um, so yeah, it was, it was amazing that one. And then three days after that, or two days after that, we went to Ilton. It's a small village, uh, close by, um, uh, Sheffield. And, um, and there's a place called, uh, Druid's Temple, which is free. You can go walk around in the forest. And, uh, it's an amazing place. It's not very ancient, actually. It's, it has been remade in the 17th or 18th century by someone that wanted to connect with the Druids uh, again. So um, they took the stones and created the temple again or in a new way. Uh, but we said we will use it to do a ceremony. So we went there and a few years ago, I felt someone from the British Islands, uh, a spirit that introduced himself like uh, the alchemist. And um, everyone started to say, oh, he's Merlin, Merlin, the magician, Merlin. And I, he never said Merlin. He always says the alchemist. So I have no idea. But later, later I, I understood that Merlin is not a name. It's like saying the Pope. Mm. So it's a French word to describe the high uh, masters of magic, which is Merlin. Is a mm. bird, uh, so um, so that makes more sense than thinking is the one, like one of the guy. story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, this alchemist came many times since 2012 to say, "I am guiding you," and he always speaks in British, like very British, and um, and I was not expecting him at all, but that day in the temple. I was expecting the people to do the ceremony 
uh, which allows us to go farther in our path. And and I was preparing everything like candles and and a bowl with with different kinds of um, incense and and someone gave you a cloak, right? Yeah, someone gave me a, a, a cloak um, as a gift a few days before. So it was fun and I say I will I will use it. So um, I was using that one and uh, I I put everything there, but I didn't have the the chance to really prepare everything. Not because I didn't have the the lighters or matches to 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 light everything up. So um so I was I, I was there and the 50 people came, but also who came with them was the driver of the bus. Uh that he had no place to go and the people said, Would you come with us? And yeah, sure. So he went there, not knowing anything about what we were doing. And he was there with the people and he just saw me, um, me actually, he had no idea what I was, but I had the cloak covering everything and suddenly I, I stopped being myself. I became uh, him, that, um, uh, that um, druid. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he put all the people in a circle and he was staring at each one but not looking at them physically. And and he took the ball to to start the cleaning of the people. And there was herbs and things in the bowl. Yeah, all the herbs and stuff. But he was like this, and of course, he wouldn't ask for a match, like some someone a lighter, like yeah. <laughs> you know. So it wasn't me, so I couldn't speak. Uh, so it'd I was. Be, it would be hella disappointing if Merlin asked for a lighter. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Very like, Merlin. <laughs> Come Don't on. be lazy. <laughs> Come on. So, but nobody understood who I was because I was just in silence. Uh, but suddenly, I I I hold this like this and and stare at at the herbs and just said and light. And when I said that word, the fire came from nowhere, like like did like this, and the whole smoke everywhere. And the fire had like colors, like it was not just the fire. It was like burning with violet and and blue green, like something like this. And like if nothing happened, he normally starts to do the cleaning of of the of the people. He wasn't surprised. He wasn't surprised because it was natural that that was like oh and light, like and uh, inside I was like what. <laughs> what just happened? It was like I'm not controlling this. I have no idea that I could do this. <laughs> and 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 he was like, shh, like everything's okay. Like <laughs> we don't we didn't have the match. <laughs> so so uh and the the other day uh the bus driver, everyone was asking like how did you did the, how do you do the trick? I was like, what trick? It was like I didn't have anything. It was like the fire come came alone and I was like no way. We witnessed this like magic, like real magic. I say, I, I guess, <laughs> I guess, but it was not under my control. It was because the being that was inside of me, he actually knew that he was the fire. And mm-hmm. I don't usually connect like that with the fire. So that could, you, could you through, through the being that was, that was with you? Because it's always with. It's not like you were there obviously in communication so it's you and the being like superimposed over each other yeah like did, becoming one yeah did you actually could you feel that yourself as the fire as that yes as that being yes what was what did that feel like it, it was like if you are burning but it doesn't burn and and you just what i feel is like if the light comes from the very inner core of the atoms like if like if each one of your atoms starts to ignite, but it doesn't burn, and you feel like you're shining, but that's it, and and suddenly it, it just became fire. Hmm. So it was it was amazing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that again. <laughs> well, it wasn't. Was was yeah. <laughs> yes, I hope. Uh, but um, yeah. So so all these kind of things happened in so these have happened in in your life in this life yeah and 
thank you for sharing these stories and thank you for you know offering people the invitation to have these new invaders into their belief <laughs> system and, and watch their immune yes. system grapple with this reality and and see how much it goes in yeah and i i don't care if people believe me or not <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> that's why i tell the story <laughs> Because I'm not trying to convince anyone. It was, of course. A, it was a great story. If you don't like it, <laughs> you miss it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I want to go back. I want to go back to your life in Chem. Yeah. Where there was a different belief system, different stories that mm -hmm. you had. So, how many thousands of years ago was that? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand years ago. So when, before we go back there and tell those stories, and we did this on another podcast we did, just to help people get into that field of resonance with that time, I was hoping that you could sing another one of your songs that another you remembered oh, yeah. from your life in chem. And sure. so we'll just you know, close our eyes. Obviously, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. It's a bad idea. Uh, but take in, take in this song in Atlantean, which by the way, everybody, he takes notes on his fucking, with his stylus in Atlantean <laughs> sometimes when he, wants to, when he wants to just scriffle some things down. It's pretty remarkable. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> why, why, don't, why don't you sing? When I, when I, when I start to, to teach the language to others, I won't be able to do that anymore. Oh uh, yeah, because someone will be able to yes. translate it. You won't yeah. have you won't have a secret <laughs> so I, Atlantean. I, I, yeah, I won't have any secret anymore. Stop spying, Atlantean. <laughs> this is mine. Yes. All right, so bring us into bring us into the time of Chem and the language of Atlantis with a little song, if you would. Any any okay, song. Hey, I like. can. Uh, there's a, a there's a song for the elements that um, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, she channeled uh, for our path that that was also seen in that time. So because we were together in that time, mm. so she channeled that in Spanish, but we had it in that language too. So it's about the elements. So you're going to sing the Atlantean yeah. version. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Sure. En yeguas es hora más Guaso te tu metet más Ir fi se ire prialan más Ir fi re que estol de firam más Enye was a soda mas was to met it mas if he
it says, uh, water is my soul. The earth, my body is lulled by earth. The air speaks my voice and light and set free my fire. That's the meaning of the song. The beautiful song. We're talking about the elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now that we're back, we've, for those of us who are open, we're back to an, to another time mm -hmm. and another reality. So tell us, tell us some stories about what we would consider magic now, what was a part of that reality, potentially how the big stones were moved mm -hmm. by people matching the vibration of the stones and singing, singing their vibration up to make them lighter solving one of these riddles of how they moved these big blocks yeah. or any 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 stories that come to mind that of of this time that you remember back in chem 10 12 000 years ago well we we were told since we were uh being born um the stories of how we are drops of water from the universe so from the very beginning we we were connected to the nature, uh, making us become aware that we are everything that is around us. And um, they used to tell the stories that that the universe dropped uh, tears of joy during the creation, and that drops created an ocean of mind, and and these uh, water drops sometimes freeze and creates matter. And that matter is us being born into this reality and inside ignites the fire that, uh, that with the water and, and the fire expands the voice, which is the air. <clears throat> so they say that we have the water inside in the shape of matter, of, of a stone uh with the light of the fire inside that pushes the the voice of the air and uh, which is the truth so we are drops of the mind uh made into matter so because of this uh, because of this story we all um we all grew up knowing that we are nature that we are everything and that you can talk to the mountains and everything. So um, they, they told us a story that the universe dropped these first nine drops of uh, tears that we call the vowels. And each one of the tears vibrated in one way, which uh, altogether sounded like And that's why we called it the Om. Mm. But it's like, uh, actually where ah, ah, eh, e, ye, e, o, o, o. And all these sounds were the first drops to the mind. And they divided into the water, the, the earth, the fire, and the air. And these four had each one of them a purpose in the universe, which was first expression. We have to express it was the water. Mm. We have to experiment the earth. We have to integrate the fire and transcend the air. So each one of these process for each one of these drops had four drops more that took matter and we call them the consonants and were 36. So nine times um, four. <coughs> four, 36. So they call the 36 patterns and sounds that could shape the reality. So we were told about how by singing, by the words, um, the transcendent of ourselves, we could manifest new realities and create from the ocean of mind. And that allows us to talk to the plants 
and know which medicine was the right one. That allows us to talk to the snakes to tell us how to heal. That allows us to talk to the rocks and move them. And we knew that we were the snake, the rock, the tree. So we were just communicating with another part of ourselves that is another drop in the ocean of the mind. And um, this way of, of thinking things uh, made a context, a very natural context in which we were able to build the geometry, the reality that we were seeing. That's why the pyramids are not to rise you up to the skies. The pyramids are actually octahedrons, that, which is the very tiniest reality that you see when you go deep into the divine. So in order to, for the world to become a portal of the divine, we needed to sing to create with the matter that we had, the octahedrons to connect with the divine. So all our culture was about to communicate with the world and we call them the Arsayan. Ars I, I named my foundation because of that. Arsayan means those who talk to the world. And <coughs> we were taught to how to communicate with the everything, with the world. And it was part of our uh, process of learning. We had three main schools. Um, not all of them, not all of us would go through the three, mainly the first one. The first school was Emenian. The Emenian were the ones that taught you about the letters, about this, this story that I just said, mm -hmm. uh, how the unity spread into all these realities and to understand them and how we are part of it. Then the Arsayan would teach you how to communicate with each one of those parts. And then the Idyllian were the last ones where you become them, when you become and you are able to handle the weather, the storms, to move the rocks um, and, and to build something like a pyramid, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, these three main schools, um, I, I, I went through, through the three of them. And um, you were a woman. I was a woman yeah. related to the school of water. That's why all my, my connection is with the element of water. And um, so I went to that school, but I was obligated to go to that school, not because of choice, uh, because I wanted to, but because I had the, the resonance with the element. So the priests and priestesses would choose between the children who was able to go to each one of the schools. And you would spend a long time doing the preparations for that. So it was a tough path that we had to do along the Nile to prepare ourselves to leave behind what we believe we are. So we had to break through each one of our layers of the ego until we become the element. And that was what we today remember as the gods and the goddesses of the ancient time. They were just people that represented a concept or an element of the universe. So we had to become that and we were called divines or gods or something like this, but everyone knew that we were people, but we were inspiration for others to become that. Um, so representatives of the divine on earth. We were not treated like gods, we were treated like guides. Uh, so we, we, we were forbid to be taken as gods because mm. otherwise you didn't understood, you didn't understand what was all this about. Mm -hmm. um, so we were just there as a, as a living presence to encode an information that others needed as a guidance to become something different. And um, that's why we were forced in such a way to be married to one another, no one else from outside. So we had to get... So you, water people had to marry water No, uh, water had to be with the earth, the fire with the air, and you cannot mix it. 
mm-hmm. so you were kind of forced to to do it mm-hmm. um <clears throat> so you have to deal with it <laughs> um and um so for example the ones on earth were the ones taught how to move the stones the ones in water were taught how to break them for example but um so how to pour the water how to make it vibrate um but we were not the ones levitating the rocks. so that's so that's how you actually created the clean breaks in the stones because there's yeah. a lot of debate about how did they chisel it so yeah. precisely mm-hmm. and really what you're saying is that the water water and sound the water priests and the sound using the sound of the water changing the vibration of the water mm-hmm. and maybe with the help of the earth priests and priestesses yes. yeah we were all working together working together could actually cleave the stones yes and then the earth the earth priests and priestesses could then sing the stones lighter mm-hmm. and then have them guided in place yeah for for us today when we look backwards it's like a movie <laughs> but um uh you should not go so far and you can go to the to the tribes in the amazon to see how people are called oh, you are the jaguar you are the you know mm-hmm. the elements of the master of this the you are the the eagle or the white eagle you have these names in the uh, in the american traditions you still have this thing of becoming an element becoming a, an animal be, uh, or, yeah being to awaken the this potential so you you can do that uh but when the whole civilization allows you to do it it's so powerful that can move mountains mm. actually you can create an earthquake you can create um, a storm you can pour the fields um, uh, so that's why that civilization was so balanced with nature mm-hmm. uh, usually when people think about atlantean civilization think about technology uh, but actually for us we were taught since we were very child very young that we are the technology that our bodies are the real technology and everything that we do around is just to improve the signal of our technology mm. and we don't need anything from the outside that's why when you go to the um to the archaeologist uh you can find these huge stones and creations, but you can't find anything else. Yeah, because you were still riding around on mules. Yeah, we we were living in the forest. We were living in the nature. Uh, we had houses, we had things, but we they were made with such uh, natural things that they disappear. Mm-hmm. So um, we didn't need much so it was it is not like we expect for a civilization to be today that needed a lot of things in order to say we have technology we were the technology mm. our bodies were the, the technology so we were able to communicate by th- singing by thinking by feeling uh, uh hugging a tree we could send a message to other village um we were able to become nature <clears throat> to become everything mm. and um, that's why also they use animal paintings or stuff like this and that's why some people believe that uh, the priests or priestesses used to have heads of birds or but actually we were representing the 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 nature what was really there mm-hmm. do you think that it, it seems to me in my own <clears throat> limited field because i live in a field of belief where we've witnessed miracles enough times mm-hmm. that it's no longer doesn't feel like a miracle anymore yeah feels like uh-huh like of course uh-huh yeah and and i've been in that and, and the and the psychedelics again have been my bridge to be able to get to this yeah get to this belief but we have this field we have this field of belief in our in our community mm-hmm. you know that's come together and so these things happen that are that are seem to be unlocking people's latent powers you know and and of course by lana 
being one of the first that I saw and watched her channel energies and languages mm -hmm. and be able to do things that were beyond comprehension. Yeah. And, you know, many, many, many people, you know, Soraya, who's sitting right here next to us recently this week, watched that come online and, and her hand moving in, in geom geometrical ways mm -hmm. and then able to do healings. And like, things are happening now in this field I think potentially because of the belief of the field mm -hmm. and also the technologies and ceremonies that we've created to kind of bring that forward. Do you see that there's this alternate parallel structure of a reality that's starting to starting to find its way back, a, a remembering of the old ways that might be able to start permeating through and maybe make a little bit of progress in our generation, but then the next generation that comes up when we start telling our children yeah. these same stories that we know are possible of like what is capable like things can start to shift where we could enter a world where we have all of the technology as we know it but then start to remember our innate human technology mm -hmm. and that's probably never occurred on earth before yeah where we had access to both spiritual and mechanistic technology yeah uh, of course we are we are opening the memory for that and uh, to be able to become many things i i can see for example now society has this really struggle to know what is a man and what is a woman for example uh and um like uh you can be a woman if you want you can be a man if you want and um this uh this talk that everyone is listening right now is just the tip of something that is opening the possibility that you can be anything and um uh the thing is that we are doing it from the unconscious so we don't know exactly what we are trying to do so <laughs> so it's, it's messy it's messy um we are mistaking the concept of what it is to be whatever you want to be that you can be anything with um with um what we have already decided to be decided mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. um so i guess that that even though as what we were talking before i guess uh about the um well about other uh how um Things can be taken. I don't know the word. I forgot the the, the thing we were talking about. Literally, um, uh? like things can be taken literally. Like we have right now on our phones an emoji that is a pregnant man. Yeah, and like that really, actually, that in some ways represents a beautiful idea that even in the masculine there is a womb of creation. Yeah, but like ultimately, we're getting it confused with. Yes. And a man is not going to have a baby, right? Like, so, it, so that's where it gets messy. It's like, we're not understanding yes. that this is actually a spiritual understanding. Yes. That we are able to access these forces of gender and, and sex within ourselves. And mm -hmm. there is a masculine womb. There is a feminine phallus. There's yeah. a woman's phallus. Like there's a man's, you know, there's all of these things energetically yeah. that are accessible, but it doesn't change the biology of what we've chosen. Uh-huh. To have his matter yes so you can embody the feminine you can embody the masculine uh it it has happened all the history in the atlantan times we had transsexuals too we have uh because there was no this limitation of feminine and masculine because we were everything so we also had that um we also have uh, had this ability to to be whatever we wanted to to be but today because we don't have the awareness of what it is to be everything we think that we have to be accepted by others in order to be what we are mm -hmm. and and we have to be accepted by law we have to be this kind of things and that brings chaotic concepts because it's all about outside and not within um it's all about being accepted which is something that is from the unconscious, not the conscious. Uh, 
So um, I've heard some some people saying, well, today it seems like if you want to be a giraffe, you can say, well, I'm a giraffe, treat me like a giraffe. And I would say, well, in the ancient point of view, yes. <laughs> if you want to be a giraffe, <laughs> teach us how it is to be one. Uh, you know, um, how does it feel? Um, but today is like a judgment of acceptance or not. Right. And um, so it's all a cultural way of, of seeing things. But what is actually happening is that our the children right now are being born in a world that the discussion is, what do you want to be? And that's the most amazing thing. Mm. Because uh, what do you perceive yourself as? Uh, like uh, a woman, like a, but the problem is like a woman, like a man, no, what do you feel you are? Mm -hmm. So that's and, the most and not amazing. worried, not worrying about what other people call you or exactly. whatever, because people are gonna call you all kinds of things. People Whatever call you, you an are. asshole. Yeah. No, it doesn't mean you're an asshole. Yeah. So. Um, or you are, but you know, whatever you identify. In a good as. way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so I guess that the very important point here is that uh, that kids are being born in a context that that are not being told anymore, or they are not going to be told any, anymore. Um, you are this but they have the chance to become what they feel they are. And this is just a tiny little beginning of an, an unconscious society um, bringing back the idea that you are free, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, then we have all the discussions that I'm not gonna go sure. into that, uh, but what it's really important is that word, is what do you perceive as? What do you want to be? And we've been thousands of years without anyone asking us this. Mm. And that's what is changing the children being born now. Mm -hmm. Because they listen the word, what do you want to be? How do you perceive yourself? And maybe, and this is the goal is not to say a woman or a man. The goal is to say, "Wow, what am I?" <laughs> and that's the the thing that they have right now. The kids have right now this environment asking them what they want to be, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Then we have all the conflicts of our society, our preconceptions of stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. Christian things. Uh, people that puts ideas upon biology, which is not good too. Um, uh, so a lot of mistaken concepts, but the one that I want to really take care of is that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and that opens a new line of reality where the kids, the children in the future will be able to decide what they want to be. And if we keep that, and if we keep that in as they are children, teenagers, and, and ad adults, uh, we can start to become anything. Mm. And we are connecting again with that ancient memory of uh, the same molecules that are in me are also in the sun. So if I want to shine, I can shine too. I have helium. I can do it. Uh, I want to be water. I have hydrogen. I have oxygen. I can do it. So if you go to the very basis, you have all you need. Do you want to be a mountain? You have silicon inside. Mm. You can do it. You can feel a mountain because you have it. So <coughs> when you go deep into the very basis of reality, that would there the the things that I touch that seems not to be alive, they are made with the same molecules, the same atoms that I am made of. So you can become anything. It's beautiful to see somebody from your perspective because 
you're you're coming from a perspective of okay this is happening and it's beautiful and it's messy as it always does when something is birthed there's yeah. <laughs> a messy aspect of it there's the screams and the blood and the it's a messy yeah. beautiful process but ultimately that that infant is beautiful that mm -hmm. thing that's being born is being will grow up yeah and that idea will grow up into something beautiful mm -hmm. It will and take time. It will take time, <laughs> and we'll have to we'll have to have the patience. Mm -hmm. And it just gives this whole permission to just be in a greater level of acceptance mm -hmm. for these things that are happening now. That are like, all right, like this is a little weird in this yeah. stage. Like there was recently a Supreme Court justice who was asked by another senator if she's a woman, if she could define what a woman is, mm -hmm. and she said, "Nope, I can't." You know, and everybody's saying like, well, that's crazy. And in some ways it is because she's not, she doesn't actually understand what the question really is. Yeah. And like, there is an obvious answer to that question. And then there's another spiritual answer to that question, but she doesn't have that awareness. So she's just kind of like, ah, I don't know. And we're like, what, we want her to be a judge? Yeah. You know, like we don't have, like, this doesn't seem right, but it's just actually like the messy stage of something beautiful that's evolving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a it's a whole process. You, if you have a one year old and say you now become a doctor, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, why you are not a doctor? Yeah, because it's only one year old. Maybe he doesn't even want to be a doctor, or whatever. So um, there's a process of learning stuff until you reach what you are trying to become. And even when you become that, you might doubt of, about, uh, of it and change it, like we all do in our lives. Mm. So we cannot um, think that what is happening now is the terrible thing. It's actually the beginning of something that uh, will bring us to something amazing. Uh, for example, now that you say define what is a woman, uh, actually, a woman is the wife of a man. That's the right definition. Because a woman comes from the ancient words, with man, which is the one that is that belongs to a man. And it's, or, it's horrible. <laughs> the, the word woman is horrible mm. uh, when you think about it. Um, actually, we all are man. Because man thing means the thinker in the native language of Europe. Mm. So the woman that is beside the thinker, no, the thinker. <laughs> so man is a thinker. So we are all mankind, the ones that think. And that's the very origin of, 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 the, of the word. And, um, or also the thinker that has a womb, womb man, mm. uh, is, is, it's just that, um, but we are all the thinkers, the dreamers, and um, we, it, there is like the, the explanation of polarity, okay? What is polarity? Polarity is just one thing. It's only one being that can be perceived in two different options. So biology decided to divide it into different options, and we decide who we call that option. But actually, we are all one, mm -hmm. the thinker. Yeah, all one and then also radically unique. You know, and, and I, I've often thought that, you know, I don't know, we have 72 pronouns to describe our gender. Yeah. You know, like 72. But actually, 72 is completely insufficient. There needs to be 8 billion. Yeah. There actually should be 8 billion because everybody is a unique gender, because everybody is a unique self, which is a unique combination yeah. of all of these different energies. Mm -hmm. So we're actually, the, some, of the, some of the challenges, we're stopping too short. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah, fully, like yep. fully, you're a unique gender. So let's, you know, th an invitation that I've thought of is like, sure, and this is fine. And if you want to, if you want to go with that and these 72 are sufficient and one, suits you great like yeah that's that's great but actually you know in your name in your sacred name you know mm -hmm. which is name just a representing your unique self is contained your unique gender yeah and who you uniquely are and so when we get back to trust our i am 
as this unique being of a unique gender, of a unique quality, of a unique mix of all of the different elements, of all of the different guides, of all of all of who we are, and just say, no, I am, and this is my name. Mm-hmm. You know, then it actually says the truth. Yep. Which is that it is we are we are one of one, and one. Yeah. Well, what we are doing, what we are doing in our society today is kind of what the universe did with the reality. We take one only being and we start to create many options of it to create diversity. And today is what society is talking about, diversity. Um, so, for example, in the past, we uh, in the Atlantean times, we had only one um, pronoun to talk about anything, which was nu. So I'm talking about her and it's nu. I'm talking about him, it's nu. It's uh, only one thing, simple. It's just a concept, nu. Mm-hmm. And if I am trying to define how we are all one, it's amnu. And that's it. So amnu. <laughs> I am the other you. So that's it. And um, so no conflict about it. Because when you start to divide the, the differences of, um, of, uh, of each one, you will never end. It's millions, as you said. You have a million options of who you can become. Billions. Billions. So, so that's diversity, and, it, and that's perfect. What is the problem? That when diversity becomes duality. So now you find this uh, before it was easy for example the community was called all gay gay people because they are they were funny so that's what gay means um to be funny so they were funny happy and that's it they are happy because they are free that's it easy but now you have l g i don't know the letters sorry and, mm-hmm. I, and I am one of them. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, um, but I don't know the letters. There are too many. So, um, what happens that that the G is fighting with the L, and the L is fighting with the Q, and and, and you know, it creates so much separation right. that not even ourselves are agreeing with the others. So you've taken something that was originally a spark of freedom, yes, and made it a, a, into separation, a container. To no, because I am this, and you are different from me. Yeah, like what. The whole point was we are all equals and you are dividing us every day more. Yeah. You know, so I guess that what we are doing is something really good because it's acknowledging the individuality of each one of us. So it will eventually go to the very self. So it's like we're dividing groups, then the groups into tinier groups until we figure out that, oh, yes, I'm unique and I'm not part of anything. I'm just unique. I think one of the pr- one of the pressures that's happened is because of discrimination. Yeah. Because of discrimination, then it's almost created this necessity to identify even even with race. Like the truth of race is that we're all intermixed. To that's some the origin varying... of every culture and any religion. Yeah. It was fear from others. Right. Right. And fear, oppression, violence, and which is all very yeah. real. And but and, it makes you one more yeah it makes you another religion and another culture that also will fight so yeah it is a good purpose to survive but you become now the hunter and it's something that we all did by nature uh from the very beginning you need a group to survive we are mammals for sure we need you need your herd to be protected and that's good if you're willing is to survive in this planet. If you're willing to become a conscious being, a part of this world. So uh, cultures, religions, and groups are just taking you away from the real purpose, which is being one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I, in evolution, I agree with the division because of course it's part of the system and I am part of it, of course. So I, I like it because otherwise we'd, we wouldn't have this, all these chances of creation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is that when we start to become aware or, or try to say 
we are trying to come back to the one, the last thing we have to do is to put a name on a group. Yeah. Um, or to try to separate ourselves from others. Yeah. In in a way, it feels like we're healing a lot of we're healing a lot of trauma mm -hmm. right now. We're healing a lot of trauma by like really acknowledging groups that have been oppressed. Yeah. And like making reparations as best we can internally and externally and there was mm -hmm. a lot of debates on how this can be done yeah. but it seems to me that this is an intermediary step and and potentially a very necessary step yes very necessary step to acknowledge the suppression mm -hmm. which is obviously an atrocity a fucking atrocity yes. like there's nothing more ugly <coughs> in this world than a, and then an ism a sexism a racism a, a homophobia or all of these different discriminational patterns mm -hmm. that we've experienced yeah. or against witches or whatever whatever we want to do like to to celebrate to celebrate the groups and bring them back to par to heal yeah. all of these kind of latent latent entrainments that we have heal all those but ultimately the place we're getting to is is the recognition of radical uniqueness mm -hmm. and because it feels really weird to me when i go i have to fill out some paperwork and it says race and i get all of these lists and then it comes to white i'm like i guess <laughs> yes you know like yes, i mean you look at me pharmacy, right now i'm pretty i'm pretty fucking red yeah and, you know like i don't know like <laughs> yes. what, what like what is it what is this how are you gonna how are you gonna reduce me to a color but like, this is this is i i was amazed by that here in the states because i i've never seen this in any other country like you are in this country there is all about uh, unity but when you go to ask for something you have to say your race it's like aren't we all equal so it was really f weird and I think it's again, it's it's the it's the it's the systemic racism, yeah, that's caused this like need for the acknowledgement and like, whoa, because we fucked it up so bad, yes, that we have to we have to get back to this, and now we're in this, you know, we're transitioning, you know, hopefully our prayers transitioning to a world where we can recognize the radical uniqueness of our gender, our race, of all of these different things, and not yeah. have to fill out these little boxes which reinforce these ideas of separation yeah. which keep us farther from each other i mean even with nationalities you know like all of these things um what where what's what country are you from or where are you from i don't i don't okay i was born in santa monica does that mean i'm a santa monican <laughs> like no i, I don't i don't yeah. it doesn't feel like that to me but whatever you want to say mm -hmm. you know it, it's a very strange way that we divide we we continue to divide ourselves yeah and and it feels like the future that more beautiful world heals heals mm -hmm. does whatever we need to do in the intermediate to heal to acknowledge to yeah. and then ultimately rest on our radical uniqueness our radical i am mm -hmm. i am self yeah it's a process of understanding it's like a like a kid playing with toys and uh, first the kid needs to break all the structure of the game in order to understand each part of it until it recognizes the uniqueness of each one of those parts and put it together until it see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole process uh, of educational um, uh, awareness uh, that for a child takes five, seven years, for a civilization takes 70 years. Mm -hmm. So we are in that moment uh, starting one of those process of transition to understand the different parts and to become aware of the different parts because we already have broken all of them right, right. <laughs> in the last in the last centuries. So um, uh, because of because of this, we are now trying to uh, pay attention to each one of the parts that we have broken and take care of them to understand how they fit together. And eventually, in seventy years we might have a result of a civilization that acknowledge uh, the uniqueness of every one individual and being all as one. Mm. And I guess that we are going so fast that we will reach that point very shortly. shortly. But, um, but we need to embrace the process of going through it. Um, and as I said, not through morality, but through consciousness. Mm -hmm. So we could accept anything that is 
going on. Like um, uh, as a part of this process that takes us to the understanding of who we are. Yeah. 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 And it will be always like this because the universe is about knowing yourself. So eventually in 100 years, we will figure out another thing to screw it up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and to and find then, a different way to way get to fun. It. Another way to heal it. Yeah. As we're wrapping up here, I have to ask, is there going to be some kind of extraterrestrial intervention of any sort that you think is possible, likely, certain? Because of course, now we're at a time where actually the collective beliefs, the collective belief field mm -hmm. is pretty much in belief that there are extraterrestrial beings, yeah. some, some that have taken physical 3D form, some that do not, and I don't want to get into your whole discussion of the confederation <laughs> and all this. That's yeah. that's been talked about that a lot. Guy loves asking you those questions, so I'm sure you <laughs> yeah. could get a lot a lot there on Guy if you want to go there. But but what do you think? As we're thinking about, I just can't help but you know think about this transition that we're making. Do mm -hmm. you think there's going to come a point where there's some kind of intervention that plays a role in our in the merger of these timelines between our, our spiritual technology and our, our current material technology and, and, and the way that our culture is moving, is there gonna be an intervention of any sort? Do you think that's possible? Mm, well, it's like the same thing of asking in the 16th century or the 15th century, uh, there was a, a lot of people that believed that God, God would come from a cloud and save everyone. And it didn't happen, even if all of them believed it. And there is a, a reason why, and it is because uh, our frequencies doesn't match its frequency. And it's not about how much do we believe in them. It's about how, as a planet, we are really prepared to be in touch with beings that are not in the same frequency as we are. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, they are close by. They have been doing interventions for thousands of years. They are here. They they are all the time here. If the question is why they don't show up, like in in the streets of New York, <laughs> and say hi, uh, it's because they would break with the entire process of evolution of this planet. Mm -hmm. So they can only help through us that we wear them and we are born here through them to do the process from here. So a lot of us, we are souls of aliens that came here to have the human experience in order to help the planet to transcend and to go into another level. The thing is that they cannot interfere in the process of someone else when you accomplish to be that aware, like most of the beings that come to this planet are, um, they know that they cannot interfere. Otherwise, they are changing their own reality. And that would be a mess for them too. You mentioned that in a, another conversation we had that many of the you know, extraterrestrial off-planet being star beings are actually us in a future evolution mm -hmm. and because of the fourth dimensionality of time yeah. that they're actually we're actually being visited by ourselves which is a very interstellar moment yeah. where Matthew McConaughey touches Matthew McConaughey through and they do the handshake oh, through yeah, the, through the portal <laughs> yes. right like so in a way there's you know there is some hard boundaries that that they can't or won't cross because things get fucked up so ultimately the answer is mm -hmm. It's on us. It's on us. And they are helping us from the future as they, as we are helping our ancestors to set us, ourselves free uh, from them. So, Well, this is super good news, though, because if they exist in the future, that means we can't have fucked it up so bad that they don't exist. Depending on which race we're talking to. <laughs> 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 if you see the gray world Oh. That's a totally different story. If you go, so this is so now we're getting into the multiverse kind of concept where there's different timelines that have created different. Each different one of the realities. races is trying to see 
uh, which one of us will create them somehow. So each one of us of them are giving us the tools for us to create them somehow. That's the fourth dimension. The gray world, we don't, that's the gray aliens and the gray world. The gray world sucks. They don't have any genitals. Where we appears, are loving it. to me they have no genitals. No genders? Genitals. Genitals? Oh, no, no. It's that a boring world planet. Sucks. It's a boring planet. Uh, that world sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, you can grab the head with the other head <laughs> <laughs> and have fun with it. Listen. <laughs> Listen. No. No. I say no. No? Okay. I'm not into it. So. No. But not all Pleiadians has balls, neither. Fuck. <laughs> so maybe Arturians are the best option. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fresh out of luck. I'm fresh out of luck. Well, you have a lot of time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias, thank you so much for just being here, being unafraid to speak your truth. I know that in any time you speak a truth, the immune system of those who don't believe you will attack you. All of the, you know, the white blood cells of this belief system have surely yeah. come at you. And but. Uh, I love to be a virus. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, a noble purpose. Uh, would you mind singing us home out of this magical world that we've uh, that we've we've mm -hmm. entered with one more song, sure. and, and then uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Mm -hmm. Going to sleep. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> the lullaby. This is a lullaby that you used to sing to your to your child. Yeah, okay. it's, a, it's a mother saying, "Come to me," because it's getting dark, and there the darkness cannot take if you are in my arms. Come to me, my dear son. Let's go to sleep. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We love you. We'll see you soon. Fit for Service is throwing a festival. It has all the musicians, my favorite musicians on the planet, really. The Glitch Mob, Dr. Fresh, Troy Boy. I mean, if you can't dance and you don't want to dance when you hear them come on, you're crazy. They're the best. We have Emancipator, Dirt Wire, Lucky Luke, Sat song. There's so many different incredible people who are going to be there. I mean, I, the list goes on. I encourage you guys to check it out. Go to fitforservice.com slash Arcadia with a K. And it's called Arcadia because Arcadia symbolizes a return to the Edenic state, the second innocence, a place where we're in harmony with ourselves, with each other, and with nature. And the guiding principle of this festival goes beyond the leave no trace ideology. We're trying to leave it better than we found it. 
leave the town of Alpine better than we found it, leave the land that we're on better than we found it, leave ourselves better than we arrived, and leave each other better than when we came. There's amazing speakers, Matthias De Stefano, Charles Eisenstein, Zach Bush, Blue, many of the podcast guests who you've heard are going to be there live. This is a once in a lifetime event that if I wasn't throwing it, I would be the first to sign up and be a part of it because it's everything that I would want. Of course, the place is going to be beautiful, lakes and mountains. It's going to be a really, really special experience. And I can't wait to meet you guys there. So check it out. Go to fitforservice.com slash Arcadia with a K and you can check out if it vibes with you. And if so, I will see you at Arcadia. Thanks for tuning into this video. Make sure you hit subscribe. Follow me at Aubrey Marcus. Check out the Aubrey Marcus podcast available everywhere and leave a comment. Let me know if this video resonated or what else you would like to hear from me in the future. Thank you so much.